Welcome back, guys. This week, we are talking to Dana Helmer and Wendy Perotti, who are the founders of Camp Reinvention. And the topic we're going to talk about today is something that is very prevalent, I think, in our demographic, and that is women who are kind of looking at their lives and saying, this is not the picture that I thought my 40s, my 50s, my 60s was going to look like. And and how can, I'm so overwhelmed, like, where do I even start to go about changing that picture? So welcome to the show, guys. Hello there. Thank you for having us. For having us. Oh, it's our pleasure. So if we could start, I'm going to ask Dana first. We'll go back and forth so everybody knows the voices. They already know Bridget and my voices. <laughs> um, so for the woman who is saying, wow, this is not the career I thought I was going to have. This is not the place I thought I was going to be. And just overwhelmed and kind of stuck in that spot. What would be the first suggestion you would give her? You know, Colleen, I'm glad you're asking this because I think a lot of women find themselves in that place. You know, I think the first thing we would challenge them to do is to embrace a belief that it's one of our core beliefs actually at Camp Reinvention. And that is the life you've lived so far does not need in any way to dictate the life you create for your future. And that is a hard one for people to wrap their head around. And so if any of you listening are thinking, hmm, I'm not sure about that one, just take it on for size, play with it. And because when you start playing with a belief, a new belief, you're going to start looking at the world through that lens. So if you take on, you know, my life in the future does not need to be the same as the life in the past, you're going to start seeing these amazing women that have created their lives. You're going to start seeing examples of that as you go about your days. So just play with that belief and start looking for evidence to support that belief. And that's really the first place to start. Would you say, Wendy, that to kind of play on that, that we don't need to reinvent the wheel? That there are women out there that we can use as examples, peers that may be not comparing, but saying, oh, this is how they went about doing this. I don't need to reinvent the wheel for myself. I think that that's really true, Colleen. Um, we absolutely don't need to reinvent the wheel. There's so much out there that we can build on and grow on. Um, but I don't know that that's where people get stuck with this point with this ownership that my past does dictate my future, because think about it, this is the way we learn, right? We learn from experience, put my hand on a hot stove, ouch, I got burnt, not doing that again. And over, I mean, let's face it, we've got a couple of decades under our belts here, right? Over a number of decades, all of that experience creates these boundaries, that we think our life has to live inside of. But the fact of the matter is that most of those experiences were about relationships, were about things that happened at work, were about goals that we set. So much more complex than just put your hand on a hot stove. So all of this experience that you think you've learned by has kind of created this trap that holds you in this box where the tiniest little adjustment creates a completely different outcome, right? And that I think is the difference between experience and wisdom, right? Experience is taking what is or what's coming and trying to shove it into the box of what was, right? Wisdom is taking everything that we learned, right? We learned so much over these decades and applying it in a way that embraces possibility that's aligned with us. You know, you, you brought up stuck being stuck, Wendy, and that is such a thing. I see so many women in our demographic that just feel stuck. They want to do something. They, like we've been talking about, they know that this is not what I pictured my life to be, but I just don't even know what to do. And I am stuck. And I know that you all are really great about you have your great ebook out on your website about when you're stuck. It's what keeps you stuck. And so, Dana, you brought up the first step that you take, you know, is maybe just define that it won't define your future. What can women do to say, okay, I've got to get out of this. I feel so stuck. Um, 
I'll go with Wendy. Wendy, I'll ask you first. <laughs> what can we do to just... I have this image of flypaper now, Bridget, yeah, in my head with yeah. the stuff. But okay? I have felt like that on time, at, at occasions where, on days where I feel so overwhelmed, I don't even know where to begin to so get anything don't start. done. And I don't even start. So what is something you think uh, to give advice to women who just feel stuck? You know, um, I think that that is one of our piece of our like critical habits that help you move forward when you are stuck. And what got you here isn't getting you there, right? What got you here is going to get you more of what's here, but we never learn. Nobody teaches us skills that help us step into um, what is unfamiliar and everything that's unfamiliar creates an entire biological, neurological series of events that runs underneath your radar and keeps you in the same place and feels so overwhelming. So this is one of those examples of it's creating teeny tiny little shifts, teeny tiny little shifts. And I think the first one is knowing what got me here isn't going to get me there. And just noticing noticing what your patterns are. Oh, there I go again, right? I'm exhausted and I ordered a pizza. I don't even eat wheat, right? But I'm exhausted. Exhausted equals pizza. Old pattern. If I want to break that pattern, I first need to notice that it exists. And you don't need to do anything with it yet, right? Just notice that those patterns are no longer serving you. You know, on your website, you have some great blogs. And on one of the blog titles, it said, stop tolerating sucky things. And that might be, Dana, a great second step. So now we're aware that we're not where we want to be and that what has gotten us here is going to keep us here unless we start shifting mentally, physically. So would a second step be stop accepting the things that suck in our lives? Oh, my goodness. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> It's interesting because so many people want to create a change in their life, but they don't really get grounded in what their current life is. And part of getting grounded in that is getting clear on what do I love about this life of mine that I want to make sure I keep with me as I move forward? And what sucks? <laughs> like, what is it that we no longer want to tolerate? That we say, you know what, this is not going to be in my life in the future and to get clarity on that. And of course, some of that can be a challenge, right? Some of the things are you know, projects, jobs, circumstances that may suck. And maybe we can change it. Maybe we can't right away, but we can move in the direction of at least changing in a way that's more tolerable for us. Some things, quite frankly, we can't let go of, right? If I, right now, for example, my dad is sick, I have to find a nursing home that sucks. I can't change that, but I'm going to need to move forward with that in the most optimal way. But there are things that we can change. And one of the things, and this is in our ebook, Freedom from what keeps you stuck is probably one of my personal favorite topics is the many ways that we should all over ourselves. We live the life we think we should live. We, we pursue this notion of success that we think should make us happy. We spend so much time trying to be the person we think we should be. We rum ruminate over what could have, should have, right? Like this whole rumination thing. And so there's so many ways that we stay stuck because we're in this place of not getting clarity on what we want and who it is that we are. And once you get clear on what you want and drop the shoulds, you're being a hell of a lot more aligned with who it is that you are and how you want to live your life. And of course, we spend so much time trying to shape ourselves into what we think we should be. Well, why? Why not just step into more of who you are, right? So those two things are huge. And if you can get clear on the many ways that you might be shoulding in your life, and to ask yourself, and again, this is the noticing that Wendy talked about, you know, to ask yourself, well, wait a minute, do I want this or is it a should? If I want it, why do I want it? Right? Thank you Get for saying middle. should slowly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I love it. Though. The shoulding when it comes I love to the should shoulding. Yes, I love it. And when I say it with this accent, it's going to sound like something else. But I do. I love that part of that because I feel like we get those shoulds from what we have been taught from society and from the world that 
this is what our whatever's on a commercial or whatever you see on people's social media, you know, posts, I should be doing that. And, and, you know, there's times, you know, we're in our life and we're thinking, oh, I should be doing that. But even if it's not a should, and like you said, um, what do you really want? It's, it's another thing. And it, this draws into being stuck too, but you want to do something. You, maybe there's something you wanted to do your whole life and you never did it because other lives got, uh, other things got in the way life happened. And now you're at this time in midlife where maybe things, you don't care what other people think so much um, as you did previously. Are there any tips there on, okay, I want to make that leap. I want to do this. I really, I found out this is what I want. It's not a should. It's I want something I crave. What are some things that we could do to take that step to say, okay, I'm going to do this. Um, and I'm sitting there. So Dana went last. So I will ask Wendy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love chance a piece. That's yeah, yeah. So, we'll do it. One question a piece, and then yes, we'll... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, I think that as you're moving forward, and and what you said is really important, Bridget. You said the woman in question has already determined. She's filtered out all of the shoulds. She's already determined this thing I want is not what I should want. It's in alignment with who I really am. It's in alignment with my values. I long for it. I know I want it. That's important because not everybody starts there when they set their goal. But once we have that, it's about consistent action. And when I say this, everyone rolls their eyes, right? Because, oh Lord, if I knew how to do that, wouldn't life be great? If I could take, I'd be going to the gym every, consistent action, like how on earth do I take consistent action on something that is brand new to me and something that scares the heck out of me? How do I do that? And this too is adopting a new belief. It's shifting what you think about when you think about taking action because we've learned that taking action means this thing is going to be a success or a failure. I get an A or I get an F or I get a C, I get the gold star or I don't. And we measure ourselves by every single little thing we do. So easy to get stuck there. And it absolutely stops us from taking consistent action. So when we rethink that and we say, wait a minute, my life is really just my experience of it, right? Ultimately, that's what I get right? Ultimately, in the end, what I get is my experience of this life. And if I just look at it through the lens as not a bunch of wins and losses, but this big, long rolling experiment, then every little thing I do is not a win or a loss. It's just a data point that gives me the next experiment. And the next one might be a big leap, or it might be a teeny tiny little inch but I can consistently roll forward for the rest of my life without all of that beating up. And it's no work to do this. It just takes adopting the belief. My life is not a series of wins and losses. It's one rolling experiment. The result of each one giving me a data point for the next one. And I do like um, that you said, you know, sometimes some of them are big and some of them are small. And I think a lot of people feel like they have to do something huge to make it I don't like whatever the checklist things or anything like that, but I do like, it's like, it might be something real big one day and it might be another thing, but it is consistent. So I feel like, I don't know. Do you find that Dana, that people beat themselves up if it's not? Oh, yeah. This absolutely. Thing. Yes, and we, yes. we make the mistake of saying, um, I failed with this effort. Well, well, it's just, the thing didn't work. It has not, you know, it's, 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 it's the project didn't work. The, right. The experiment didn't work. So what, again, just a data point, you know, one analogy we like to use is like, you're getting on a bike when you're in your head and you have not gotten yourself into action, you're sitting on that bike and you're wobbling around and you can't even stay balanced. Right. But once you get into motion and you start pedaling, now you can steer. And because you're steering, now you get to be curious. You get to kind of go down this street or you get to go down that street. So it's because you're in action, because you're pedaling, now you can steer. And that's the data point that Wendy was talking about, right? 
Now it's not, it's like, okay, I learned this over here. Cool. Let me, let me try this route. Oh, that didn't work. Okay. Let me try this route. And so it's just, it's just getting on that bike and steering until you're in that place of action. You are so stuck in your head and we do not figure anything out by being in our head. We figure it out by being in action. So along those lines, we talk about when women don't know what they want, what that next affirmative step is, we have the wisdom in our lives to at least say, but I know what I don't want. I know which direction I don't want to take this bike. So to follow up, Wendy, if women are at that point where they want to go for a ride, but they don't know where they want to go, what can they do? Yeah. Um, well, the first thing, stop figuring it out. <laughs> stop figuring it out. You have figured it all out so many times already right there we've figured so much out and we refigure it out so just stop stop and start thinking of your life your choices as a series of things that you're just going to put through some filters right you're going to put through new filters that's how you're going to get to a new place the first one is one that we call the compass point that is how do you want to feel about yourself and your life on your very last day I want to feel like I don't regret that I didn't hold back. Okay, that's a big filter for me. Does this thing bring me closer or farther from that? What could I do in this moment? What tiny thing can I do in this moment that makes me feel like I didn't hold back? I played all in. So that's a really critical filter is setting this compass point for you. How do you, what's the feeling you want to have on your very last day? And then, like I love taking clients and putting them through four columns of filters because this speaks to so many times we know what we don't want way before we know what we do want, right? So we have at camp, we have our, our campers make four columns. And the first one is, I know I want. This is just a wild brainstorm. It could be anything from a beach house to another cup of coffee, to love in my life, anything that comes up. I know, I know that I want. Column number two, I think I want, because we're not always sure. Even if we do that shoulding work that Dana should ing work. <laughs> <laughs> I speak fast, I'm sorry. No, it was just, no, it, it, was we good. Could tell. it was good. <laughs> Even yeah. when we do that work, we're still not 100% certain. So there's this column of, I think I want. These are things to experiment with and explore. Column number three, I know I don't want, right? I don't want to feel stressed. I don't want to feel like someone else's decisions are impacting my life. I don't want to move. I love my house. Anything that comes up, I know I don't want. And then the obvious fourth column is, I think I don't want. And once you have all of these filters, you have this compass point and you've got these other filters, you get out of bed in the morning and you say, what tiny thing can I do in this moment that brings me closer to my compass point? It might be make a phone call, might be take a shower, might be go for a run. It might be do a video on social media that you've been avoiding putting yourself out there. It could be anything, but you'll know when you ask yourself the question, what tiny thing can I do in this moment? And if you can't get yourself to do it, make it tinier. Keep making it tinier until you can get yourself to do it. And the moment you do, you are on the rolling experiment. You know, I really interesting like about that. this compass point too, is the compass point sounds so simple and it is, but it can make a profound difference in your life because a lot of times we're thinking about the doing. What do I want to do? What do I want to accomplish? We're not thinking about how do I want to feel and how you want to feel is at the core of how you want to experience this beautiful life of yours, right? And every single goal, by the way, is actually about a feeling state. Losing that 10 pounds has nothing to do with the 10 pounds. It has everything to do with, I want to feel strong. I want to feel good in my jeans. I want to feel sexy. I want to feel fit. I want to feel, it's always about a feeling state. So this compass point, this feeling state of how you want to feel about yourself and your life on your last day is also how you want to be feeling today, right? And I can share with 100% certainty that there were 
jobs and my earlier career path that I took because I thought I should. It looked great on paper. It checked the boxes, you know, like it was, it was like the perfect next step according to what I thought I should do. If I had put that job opportunity through the lens of what I now know is my compass point, I would have said hell heck no <laughs> to that job the second it came across. But it was the wrong choice for me. And I knew it at the time, but I was thinking with my head and I did what I should. And it was wrong. I, I really considered a year that I lost my life. So really, if you can get clear on what that feeling state is for yourself moving forward, you're always going to make a choice that's aligned with what's important to you and how it is you want to be experiencing your life. Huge that, impact, even though it's simple. That is, that, you know, when you brought up to just career and what you did in your career and it was a should have. And so many women in this time of life are at, at a really big cross, you know, crossroads in their life. Um, it seems to just really happen in midlife career changes. You might be retiring. You might've been aged out, even though you should, should not have been, <laughs> but you might've been aged out. Um, you might be going through a different type of life. Divorce. Might, a lot of divorce is happening at this kids time. Leaving. It, just so many things are happening at these points uh, in, in women's lives. And, you know, but with those lists too, I, I do love the list. I think I know, you know, I know I don't. Um, the little points, but, but when you have something like that, like this big change and they, you just feel like I, I, it's too late for me to do this. It's too late for me to do this. I want to, oh, I'm too old to do this. What would you say to someone that comes to you and says, no, I, I know I'm too old. I should have done that when I was younger. Mm -hmm. What is some advice there that you could give Wendy for that? Um, you are absolutely not too old. You are absolutely not too old. If it is for you, if you put it through those filters and if it's aligned with you, you are absolutely not too old. I'll give you an example of a friend of mine um, who is, my, I think she's in her mid forties now, a little younger than me. And um, when I met her, she was, I met her almost 10 years ago she wanted to be a ballerina. Okay, now this is a classic, it's too late, <laughs> okay? It is a classic, she's in her mid thirties. She never, even as a little girl, never took a ballet class, okay? She also is almost six feet tall and very beautiful body, muscularly built, okay? She wanted to be a ballerina. And she started taking classes with little girls. She started taking classes with little girls. And then she took classes with tweens. And then she, so this is it's eight years ago, actually, right? And probably she didn't start right away from when I met her. So maybe it's seven years ago. Well, this year she danced on stage in a lead role in the Connecticut Ballet's Nutcracker performances. Wow. Wow. So Good for her. Yeah. If it's yours and you want it, now, is she going to make a million dollars doing it? No, pro probably not. But if you want it, let go of all of the ways that you think it has to look. Let go of the specific outcomes that you have. You want love in your life? and you have this envision of Norman Rockwell pictures of what that looks like, let that go. Just know that the thing that you want is love. And I guarantee you, if you follow that, the way this friend of mine followed the ballet, you will find it. It probably will look completely different than what you thought it was going to look like, but you will find it. And at Cambria Invention, like hundreds of women, we have seen go through this process. Like we know, we know that it's true. If it's yours, you can have it. You can get there. So Dana, can you talk now that we're on the conversation of Camp Reinvention, can you mm -hmm. talk a little bit about what Camp Reinvention is and who you're speaking to, what you're trying to achieve? Yeah. Thank you, Colleen. You know, we've been talking a lot about how women at this stage of life, and we say this stage, it's it's midlife and older. So, you know, we say 50-ish, give or take, and really up through whatever age, right? 
we're at a lot of women are at a crossroads. And so what we do at camp, and we really focus on one thing and one thing only, is taking that woman who is at a crossroads, whatever that looks like for her, and helping her move to that place where she's not only clear on what she wants, but she is in action. She is making it happen. And she's enjoying our life a hell of a lot more. And the reason why we say that is because we women take things so seriously. We have so many responsibilities. We do get way down over the years. And the reason why we call camp camp is even though we're doing really rich, you know, very um, deep and challenging work, change is hard, right? So there's a lot of work we're doing that's asking people to be honest with themselves in a way that maybe they haven't before, or to have lines of questioning and inquiry and exercises that may conjure up emotion and will move them forward. But it can be challenging work, but we also want them to get back in touch with joy and wonder and fun and play and adventure and creativity. Like these things that we loved as a kid, sometimes we let go of as we take on the responsibilities of life. So it's really moving you from that place of overwhelm to, oh my gosh, I'm living what I want to be living and I'm really excited about it. So our process takes women through everything they need to do to get to that place. And is that all online? You know, it's primarily online. Uh, we have uh, offered a couple camp lives in person, but yes, most of the uh, programming is online. It's a 12-week program. This is called our Camp Reinvention Process, and we're offering it four times a year. So the next program actually launches uh, March 28th. And what's great is we're teaching live. And because of that, we also are available to the women for coaching and Q&A, of course, and for peer support. And I tell you, there is gold in the community of women that are doing this change together, right? Change is hard and it's really hard to change when you're doing the thing alone, but to bring women like this together, um, there's this beautiful community with what happens together. Um, and because we're teaching live, they get that chance to obviously benefit from our coaching support and teachings, but from each other as well. Is there a limit to how many people can be like, or is it sold out or, or is there not a limit to how many people can take part in this? There's not a limit um, because we are doing the teachings live. After women go through the 12 week camp reinvention process, we do invite them to consider joining our membership community, which is the Compass Circle. And with that, they can opt into group coaching circles, which are small little group coaching pods. There's a limit to those pods because we keep those really small, but we will accommodate as many women that would like to be part of those coaching pods. So to answer your question, you know, we can accommodate women in different ways. One thing we're doing this year too, and I want to share with you, we're super excited about this, is we're offering what we call expert bundles. And so if you know your reinvention is I want to change a job or pivot, pivot my career, or I want to start a business, or I want to get my menopause mojo back. I want to handle my hormones, feel normal and good in my body again. We have bundles of experts that are going to help you accomplish those things. So we consider it, they're the experts that teach the hard skills we don't teach. So for example, if you're looking for a job, we've got the networking expert. We've got that re expert who's going to help you with the resume for those digital keywords that we didn't need to worry about 30 years ago. We've got the LinkedIn res expert, the negotiation expert. So we have you know six or seven experts in each of these bundles that are pre-recorded, and you can purchase that as an add-on to the camp reinvention process if you choose. So we take the woman through the process. It's all about growing all of who you are behind whatever goal you have. But if your goal is specific, we have experts who are going to help you cut to the chase and make that happen quickly for you. Um, I have one more question and I'm going to direct it to Wendy. A lot of women are saying, this is amazing. I want to do this, but there is a guilt associated to putting ourselves first because we have never done that before. It was either our job, our kids, the dog, the cat, the, you know, whomever it could be the grass growing outside. We have been spending our lives, putting ourselves last. How, what suggestions you give to a woman who is interested in doing this, but I just, I can't spend the money or I, I don't have the time or I, I can't do this for myself. Colin, you are right on the money. Like if you, if someone you loved was struggling, feeling stuck, if they knew there was something more from, for them, you would find the time to help them. You would find the resources to help them. So if you are that person who is struggling to move to this thing that you feel so attached to, you're longing for it. Put that person, put the person that you love in your mind's eye. 
if you could do it for them, if you could find the time and resources for them, do it for yourself. And often, I'll be honest with you, that doesn't even work sometimes for us, right? Because we still feel like, well, of course, it's my daughter. Of course, I would do that for her. But for me, I, blah, 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 I should be able to do this myself. I should be able to handle this myself. You can never see the outside of the can from inside the can. No one can do this. No one can do this by themselves because we're talking about uncharted territory. And so think of it as being a role model. What do you want to model for the people that you love? What do you want to model for the young women who know you? who will look up to you? Do you want to model that you've sacrificed yourself because you can't give to yourself what you've given to others? I don't think any one of us would say yes to that. Thank you. I think that's going to help a lot of women yeah, yeah. with the guilt factor. Mm -hmm. Could you share with our listeners how to get in touch? Yeah. So our website is campreinvention.com. And if you do want to get the ebook that we mentioned, which is Freedom from What Keeps You Stuck, that's campreinvention.com forward slash ebook. And our, it's very easy to get a hold of both of us. We have an email that goes directly to, to both Wendy and to myself. The email is hello at campreinvention.com. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to answer your questions. So uh, feel free absolutely to reach out. And we want to thank Wendy and we want to thank Dana for coming on today and hopefully giving some advice that resonates with women who are, are at this stage of life and saying, what's next? What do I do? So thank you guys for joining us. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. It really was.